Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah and Tasha's cauldron of everything has been getting a lot of hate on its puzzles and honestly for some good reasons. When I first got Tasha's and I saw the puzzle section, I was like... super excited to finally have pre-written puzzles that I could just plug into my game. And so I did just that. And it ended up looking something like plug and play puzzles. Just give your players a handout. They'll understand it. What makes Tasha's puzzles so hideous? And more importantly, how can we as DMs fix them? That's what we're going to talk about today. So here we go. So if you haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe to Hapling Hobbies for lots of DM resources. And let's get into what makes these puzzles so bad. First of all, it's that the puzzles all have a similar solution, which centers around letters and numbers. And these aren't something that players are likely to think of as a solution for the puzzle. Now, the only way to fully explain this is to simply give you an example. So players, if you're watching this, beware for spoilers for puzzles. So one of the puzzles is uh, a painting type puzzle. Players walk into a museum or perhaps a room of a, a wealthy person's house and they see several paintings up on the walls, each of them depicting monsters and each of them having a different number of monsters in each painting. For example, one painting will depict one werewolf standing under a moon. Another painting will depict three dragons in combat. The solution to this puzzle is that that players have to go and count the number of monsters within that painting and then use that to get to a certain letter in the monster's name. For example, three dragons, so you have dragon, D-R-A. The one for that is A. And you do this with each one of the paintings to spell out another monster's name and then that's supposed to be the solution that your players use for something else. As you can probably tell already, players are not likely to think of that as a solution. But hear me out. Just, just hear me out. What if we hit it with a hammer? It couldn't hurt anything, right? Just hit it with a hammer. They're more likely to think that the solution has something to do with the painting itself or something physically in the room, not with the monster's name. And it wouldn't be so bad if that was the only puzzle that was like that, but every single one of the puzzles in Tasha's centers around that exact same idea. One of them is literally just a word search where you have to find the word for the different schools of magic and avoid those and use the ones that haven't been used in that word search. It's honestly pretty terrible. Um, so that's the first problem a lot of people have been having with these puzzles is that the solutions all center around numbers and letters. The next problem with these puzzles goes along with that and that's that there's nothing for strength or dexterity based characters to do. Is there anything you would like to contribute, my fine roguish fellow? No nah, man, I think you got this covered. I mean, you're the smart one. Let me know if you need me to like pick a lock or disable a trap for you or something. So glad to be useful. <sighs> These puzzles say at the beginning of the section that they are for all classes, including martial classes, and yet the puzzles themselves only focus on intelligence-based solutions. As I said before, numbers and letters. Not exactly something your average barbarian is going to be very interested in, considering some of them can't read. Hey, wizard. What do all these strange, intricate symbols mean? Those are letters. So why have puzzles that you say are for all classes but really are just for your smart ones? It's just very one-sided and not very interesting for those players that are more action-oriented. Can I hit something yet? No, we're not gonna hit it. Huh? Can I hit something now? Look at me. No. Oh. I'm gonna hit it. I said no! 
finally, some of the puzzle scenarios simply don't make any sense. Puzzles are supposed to guard something important, and yet a few of the puzzles well, let's look at another example. In this example, the haunted hallway, we have a small child spirit who is crying because she cannot pick up her toy. She cannot pick up her toy until she remembers the toy's name, but she's forgotten it. However, she does know a whole bunch of other names. In this hallway, you're going to find six different alcoves, each of them with a verse. These verses link to the child's uh, family members, even and one of them is her cat, and she can remember all of their names. And if the players ask the child, what was your mother's name, she will gladly tell them. This will light up the alcove with a certain number of candles, and again, the players have to count the number of candles and then count the letters in the name that lit up that alcove to eventually get to the name of the toy. All of this is just to release the soul of the child because once she remembers the name of the toy, she picks it up and she disappears. The question is, why? Why would anyone trap the soul of this poor child and not allow her to pick up her toy and create an entire puzzle around it? It simply doesn't make sense and several of the other puzzles in it are the same way. The scenarios simply don't make sense. And perhaps you can figure out a way to put that into your campaign, but the, the solution for that isn't exactly um, the first thing that you might think of. And as a bonus reason why a lot of people don't like this, and I was super excited about this and am vastly disappointed, is that the hints aren't really all that helpful. For example, on one of them, there are little bats or spiders or things on a box that um, equal keys. Again, it's based on the number of letters in the word bat or spider. Goes back to number one, super irritating. But the hint on that is simply a nature check will not help you on this puzzle. Oh, thanks, so glad we got that out of the way. So finally, in all of this, these are the problems that DMs are kind of frustrated by. How can we fix them? How can we make these puzzles something that we can actually use? Well, my solution is to get rid of the solutions. Actually, for most of these, I like the setup. The setup's pretty neat. The idea of having a bunch of paintings around in the room and having the puzzle be about those paintings, I very much enjoy. However, the solution that they came up with for that isn't very enjoyable. So I would change it to something that perhaps is a little more interesting to all of my players. Perhaps they need to remember the number of beasts in the painting, and then in the next room they see statues of those different monsters that they can rotate with a successful strength check. They need to rotate these the number of times that they saw in the other room. To make this even harder, perhaps the door to the other room locks and they cannot re-enter it, so they have to rely on their note-taking skills to be able to finish the puzzle. Another solution might be to add in different things that require uh, feats of bravery or strength. This will play to your barbarians, to your monks, to uh, players that don't exactly have a super high intelligence or wisdom. Putting some of these things in might be a little more interesting for those players. I would like to rage! So all in all, it's not that the puzzles in Tasha are really that horrible, it's that the solutions to them are pretty mundane. They're, they're difficult, first of all, for your players to think of, and once they've solved one, you can bet that they've kind of solved them all. So switching up the solutions to these, making them a bit more interesting and for all of your players, and not just your intelligence-based ones, will make these puzzles something that you can use in your campaigns and can be a lot of fun. I will say I'm not a super negative DM. When new resources come out, I'm generally very excited about them and excited to find ways to use them in my campaign, even if they're not perfect like these puzzles. Just because they're not perfect doesn't mean they can't be super useful. 
So make sure that you still check out the puzzle sections of Tasha's. They might give you some really cool ideas for your campaign. Also, if you're looking for more DM resources, make sure to check out my Patreon down below where I release new DM resources every single month. Subscribe to Happling Hobbies and may your game have advantage. Happling Hannah here, signing out. <laughs>